All right, good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Praise Him, all creatures here below. The doxology. Sang that every chapel service at school. We had chapel every day. We'd come in there and sing that along with the others. And to have special preachers come in there and preach to us. It was a pretty cool experience because it took me from topical preaching. I, I was raised in topical preaching where the pastor would preach on a topic. And that moved me over to verse by verse study. And I love it. And I'm so grateful for that. I praise God for his guiding, his leadership, his direction in our lives to get us where we need to go and to be there on time, his time. Amen. And I love that. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here tonight. I appreciate y'all praying for me. It's been a rough couple of days. I just Praise the Lord anyway. Go on. What are you going to do? Are you going to lay down or are you going to do Bible study? I say do Bible study. Praise God. It's the same hour, right? Might as well. That's, that was my philosophy playing football. You're going to be hurt. Now, you're going to be hurt on the bench. You want to be hurt in the game. Get me in that game. Amen. Praise the Lord. I praise God for you all. You know, tonight's a big night. It's the night when Jesus had the Seder meal with his boys in the upper room. And it's already happened in Jerusalem you know, Jerusalem time. And then tomorrow is the Passover when he was crucified. He loves us so much. He's so good to us. Heather says, I'm so grateful for that verse by verse too. Some pastors get so far away from the word. It's terrible. It is. It's so bad. Uh, not even preach what they read. Get up and preach a verse and then bring in a bunch of jokes and newspaper articles and everything that doesn't even come close to what that verse said. I, I was so sick into that. That is um, that is Southern Baptist, man, for the most part. Those guys are so shallow. They're, they're right in their... See, I say that because I was ordained Southern Baptist. I no longer hold that ordination, but I was ordained Southern Baptist. And these guys, they go down and they'll, they'll go into the Word, okay? The, the Word is this deep, but they'll go down about this deep into the Word and just skim the top. And they'll come up for air once in a while, you know, to the worldly things, to earthly things, and then skim the top. And they never go deep. And uh, I, I, I don't know of anybody who goes deep. You know, David, people say, David Jeremiah, he's a Southern Baptist. David Jeremiah, oh, he, he's great. He, he's got an eyeball behind him when he's preaching, guys. Freemasons on that guy. Freemasons are in his pocket. Okay, and he, he doesn't preach the truth about eschatology. And he surely doesn't believe the Bible codes. Hello, hello, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, Aaron. 19. That 19's come into play this year a lot. I praise God for that number. 19. Hallelujah. You know, since it is the night before Passover, I thought we'd begin reading the passage. Get your Bibles. Let's turn to John 13. John 13. He had, Jesus had just finished his preaching there with the Pharisees who were trying to look at him. And who are you? What's your claims? And, and uh, he said, he that believeth on me don't believe on me. He believes on him that sent me. If you guys doubt me, you doubt God the Father. Because he's the one that sent me. Amen? Amen. And then uh, we, let's go to chapter 13. Uh, that seminary nonsense. I am so glad I didn't end up there. I probably would have got... Oh, they all do. Yeah, doctrine, theology. And you, you got to keep greasing palms and, and hey, guys, hey. So you'll get a place to speak and you'll get some friendships and you get to use their activity center. And it's just wickedness, man. Okay? We encourage you to read, guys. We encourage you to read 10 to 20 chapters in your Bible every day. 10 to 20 chapters. And I, I have found the best way for me is to hold the Bible in my hand and put the headphones on and hear it in my ears. Audio Bible. Listen to it. 10 to 20 chapters every day. It'll change your life. We also want you to download that Bible code link she put up here. Download those Bible codes and fast track them. I had somebody text me today, said, I've not been able to be on the lives, but man, I am YouTubing it and fast tracking the Bible codes. Glory to God, man. That's the lingo we're singing in heaven, ain't it? Hey, Amen. We're about to go to heaven. All right. Let's look at John 13. Now, before the feast of the Passover, praise God, here we are. We're right there. Tonight, guys, on, on the real calendar, and nobody knows this. Nobody cares. 
Tomorrow's Passover. Tomorrow is the very day Jesus died on the cross. And what is tomorrow? It's Wednesday and people are just going to go about their day and whatever. And we already celebrated Easter, so we're good. Man, dude, God is the one who created time. He gave us the sun, moon, and stars on the fourth day. And he wants us to stay in time with his time. Keep time. All right? And then he comes to Moses and he says, here's the time I want you to keep. This is the official time in heaven, and I want it to be the official time on earth. In Leviticus 23, he gave him those seven events that they were supposed to recognize annually. Seven every year. And that's the Passover, the unleavened bread, the Feast of First Fruits, Pentecost, and then in the the autumn months, you got three feasts there. So the first three feasts were filled in one weekend with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The next one that's about to be fulfilled is Pentecost with a rapture. The rapture is going to happen at Pentecost, and Pentecost, we begin to count for Pentecost the first day of the week after the resurrection. So we're coming up on that, the Pentecost count. So tomorrow is Pente uh, our Passover, and Saturday is the resurrection. Please, please know this. Please, please embrace it. Please be in time with the Lord. Okay? Be in time with the Lord. And so he says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, because he wasn't going to be able to have the Passover feast on Passover. He was going to be dead. So it says, Now before the feast of Passover had come, they had a feast before the feast. Because Jesus knew all things. It says he knew that his hour was about to come. We're in John 13, verse 1. He knew his hour was about to come, that he should depart out of this world unto his Father, having loved his own, which were in the world. He loved them to the end. What a beautiful thing, guys. And I want you to know I love you. I love every one of you. There's nobody on this planet that I hate. There's nobody on this planet that I don't love. I love you. We, we preach a serious service here, a serious message, because it's the Word of God. When you're preaching the true Word of God, it's going to be a little hardcore at times, especially when you're you know, walking out there in the world and you like to do your own thing. And, and you, you, you've come under theology of the seminary. And when you meet up with the Bible, it's kind of rough. It's kind of a rough gig. But I love every one of you. And I encourage every one of you to love everyone, even the enemies in your life, those that hate you. Those that are stupid to you, those that are demon-possessed, love them, love them. And how do we do that? We pray for them. That's what Jesus said. Love your enemies. Pray for them. Pray for those that despitefully use you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Amen? You just pray for them. You pray for them, you pray for them. That's how we love them best. Lord, you take care of them. Save them if they're not saved. And if they are, get a hold of them so they don't lose their rewards, man. And we love them that much because we want them to have as many rewards as you and I want to get. Amen. And so he says, uh, I've loved every one of you right here to the end. And they don't even know it's the end. They don't even know what he's talking about. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and he went to God. Praise God. Hey guys, when you know that you have a man of God in your presence, don't shun him or hate him. You receive them, understanding they have been sent from God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay, that's what John means, sent from God. When you have people, true people, and you know they are men of God, they are men of the Bible, they hate, hate the world, the love of the world is not in them, one iota, you better receive them. Okay, do not receive false prophets, only the ones sent from God. Not the one sent from the devil. We've got a story right here where Judas is sent from the devil. And the devil's about to enter this cat. Okay? Sent from the devil or sent from Jesus. Find those who are sent from Jesus and love them, pray for them, and just be part of that. And it was, supper being ended, the devil now entered into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that their father had given them all things. Now, if this was in the USA, it would be happening right now. They would be having their dinner right now. This would be happening at this very present moment, Central Standard Time, okay? But, of course, it happened in Israel time. And so we'll get to that portion here in a second, where they are at the present time. Four, he rises up. We're in John 13, four. 
He riseth up from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and he girded himself. And after he poured the water of basin, he began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and said, And Peter saith unto him, Lord, why are you washing my feet, man? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, uh, Thou shalt never wash my feet, Jesus. Come on, man. If I wash thee, Jesus said, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, don't just wash my feet, but go ahead and wash my hands and my head then. And Jesus is like, Dude, I'm just here to wash your feet. Peter was always going outlandish on this thing. And just go with God. Go with his word. He doubts his word. You're not going to wash my feet. Yes, I am. If I don't wash your feet, you ain't part of me. Okay, then wash all me. No, I'm here to wash your feet. That'll make you part of me if I wash your feet. Verse 10, Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not saved uh, to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all of you. When Jesus saves a man, he saves him completely. He may not look clean, he may not smell clean, but inwardly and in God's eyes, he has been made whole. When you're saved, when you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, his shed blood, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are saved and you are clean all, but not all of you. And he's thinking of Judas right here. For he knew, verse 11, who should betray him. Therefore said he, you're not all clean. So after that, he washed their feet and he had taken his garments and sat down again. And he said unto them, okay, so... He ate, he get done eating, he washes their feet, and he says, man, let's keep eating. And they sit down to fellowship some more. And you know, they, they reclined, they didn't sit in chairs, they reclined back on their elbows, and their feet were under the table. And so they're all on the floor level, reclining. And that's why John was reclining into Jesus' breast. And Jesus was reclining, and John was reclining, and Peter was next to him. How do we know Peter was next to him? We'll keep reading. And, uh, Let's see. Then he goes on a discourse and he says, verse 12. So after he had washed their feet, he, he took the garments and he sat down again and said unto them, Know ye what I have done for you? Do you know what just happened here? Do you know what I've done for you? Verse 13. You call me master and Lord and you say, well, for I really am. And if I be your Lord and master, I've washed your feet. You ought to go out and wash other people's feet. For I have given you an example here that you should do. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Whatever you've seen me do, you better go ahead and do. Neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. I speak uh, not of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me lifteth up his heel against me. There's one of you here that want to stomp me to the ground. The devil inside you wants to crush me. Genesis 3.15 said I get to crush him. The whole purpose of the devil and the whole ways of the devil and the whole people, all the religious crowd who don't like the Bible, they're waiting to stomp the preachers who preach the Bible. And they're coming after him. But don't let, don't let Satan use you as a, as a stomper of the preacher, a stomper of the word, stomper of him who has been sent by the Father. Don't be that retard, okay? Verse 18, I speak not of all you, I know whom I've chosen, and the scriptures say he might be fulfilled, that he, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you, before it comes, this is the Bible code. Listen to this. This is the Bible code. I tell you before it comes, that when it comes to pass, you may believe that I'm he. You, you understand? That's God's M.O. It's always been his M.O. Bible prophecy, he tells it aforetime. So when it happens, you had better recognize quickly, okay, 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 that was God who said this. This was God's word. This was God's Bible, his plain text and his coded text. And I tell you before it happens, so when it happens, you'll know that I am he. Verse 20, Verily, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, he that receives whomever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. You better receive Sean Mitchell, guys. God has sent this man to bring us the word, and he's spoken it to us before it happens for the last 10 years. We have 10 years of Bible codes, and they're about to meet their last publication, their, their last update right here shortly in this season. Tis the season, okay? We know that the rapture is going to happen during the Feast of Pentecost. The Feast of Pentecost happens the second full week of June, sometime in there. We'll know here shortly. Sean's going to get that 
to us and we'll have it on record. He'll tell us beforehand. So when it comes, we'll know that he was of God, sin of God. Don't hate him. Don't despise him. Don't critique him. Do not critique this guy. He's either got the word of God or he don't. And if he does, you better go with it and you better fast track it. Better get it in your head and your heart, man. Verse 21, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit. Man, dude, don't be one of those. Don't trouble Jesus. Go with him. Walk with him. Love him. Abide in him. Abide with him. Read his word. Know his word. Memorize his word. What else are you going to do? Watch TV? Is that what you're going to do? You spend time all day long with Satan? Sports. Sports. It's good for my child. How about Bible reading and memorization? Wouldn't your kid be better off having memorized the whole book of John? You know, you could probably do that in a whole baseball season. Instead of going to the practices and the games and paying all that money for the hotels. and go, Why don't you have your kid memorizing John and reward him well for it? Each chapter. Come on, dude. We are citizens of heaven. We're not citizens of this earth. Oh, here goes him people wanting to stomp the preacher. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, one of you here is going to betray me. Verse 22, we're in John 13, 22. Then the disciple looked on one another, doubting, who, who is it? Nobody expected Judas. Nobody. They were like, who, who is it? Which guy is it? Judas fit right in there, man. He was a good brother of Jesus for a long, long time and a brother of the rest of them. A brother from another mother, man. They didn't even expect him. Verse 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. That's John. Check it out. Peter is laying on John's bosom, and he says, Well, ask him who it is, dude. So Peter initiates, and John says, Well, who is it, Lord? Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved, John. Simon Peter therefore beckoned him and said, Hey, dude, why don't you ask him? To see who's he, who he's talking about. Which, which one of us is it? And he, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is of whom I shall give a sop. And when he had dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Well, John just witnessed that. He heard the Lord say it, and he witnessed it. Now, I don't know if Peter ever got that news or not, man. But John did. 27. And after the sop, S-O-P, son of perdition. It's a nice little note to write in your Bible there. Because Judas was the son of perdition and Barack Obama's the son of perdition. When he had had the sop, I think that's kind of amazing little English tr transliteration there. And he, and he says, and after the sop, Satan entered into Judas. So Jesus' heart is real heavy at this time. We just saw that. And his heart began to grow heavy because he knows what's about to happen and nobody does. He is about to become the sin of the whole world. Remember that sin we talked about on Sunday or whenever it was, might have been Saturday? That one sin that you committed that was just mind-blowing. Why did I do that? How did I get into this mess? Why would I make such a stupid decision like that? And it haunted you for a week or a month? That was just one sin. Jesus took upon him all the sins of all mankind along with that guilt and stress and j just the pain of it, man, the misery of it. That's what was laid on Jesus so he could suffer in our place so we wouldn't have to go through that when we sinned. Jesus is good to us. And remember, the story we're reading is happening tonight, 1,994 years ago tonight. Don't miss it. And verse... 27, and after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, whatever you got to do, bro, make it quick. Now, no man at the table knew of what intent he spake unto him. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, hey, go buy some things that we need up against the feast, or that he should have given something to the poor. He then re received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. And therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him himself, shall straightway glorify him. 
And then he goes on to talk with discourse, and he, this is where he talks to Peter, and, and Peter says, oh, man, let's go down to that. Verse 36, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, wherever you go, I'm going. Sounds like Ruth, don't it? Wherever you go, I'm going. Jesus said unto him, whether I go, you, you cannot follow me, but thou hast followed me afterwards. I'm going to heaven, bud, you ain't coming. But when you die, you'll come on along. Verse 37, Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake, bud? Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say to you that the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. And we know that story. Then in chapter 14 is, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, talking about the rapture in heaven. For the sake of time, let's scoot on over to Jesus gives that whole red letter discourse. He's preaching to him, his last message to him. And then verse 17 uh, it says, let's see here. Okay. I just wanted to see when they crossed the brook Kydron, when they left. Let's see here, 17. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So chapter 17 is the prayer that Jesus prayed. John 17 is that prayer he prayed for you and me. Read that thing at your homework. Read that thing. Okay? Now, chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron. Now, guys, this is the brook where Hezekiah took all the idols and destroyed them, turned them to powder, and he put them in this brook. And here we have Jesus crossing over this brook crossing over the idols, stepping over the idols to get to where he's going, to the cross. And the Catholic Church has made the cross an idol with him on it, a crucifix. And Jesus hates those too. That's an idol to him. And Jesus walked over the idols to free us all who had served our own hearts, served ourselves, because a self-worshipper is a Satanist. That, that's their just number one point. To thyself be true. And so he crosses over this brook uh, with his disciples, verse 2, and Judas also, when he betrayed him, now we know that they made their place in the garden. You read Matthew and the others. They made their place in the garden. They situated themselves, and Peter, uh, Jesus said, Peter, James, John, you guys go with me a little farther. And they went farther and prayed. The boys fell asleep, and he said, could you not watch with me? Watch with me one hour, man. And they prayed some more, and then finally we got this scene. Verse 2, John eighteen two. And Judas also, when he betrayed him, he knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted there with his disciples. They went off, and there was no secret. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came thither with the lanterns and torches and weapons. This is happening about right now in Jerusalem time. It's midnight. They've been singing. They've had their church service. They had their dinner. And right now is about the time this is happening. When Judas came by to do his betrayal, to do his thing. And guys, will you internalize this? Will you internalize the power of this night? And this, we believe, is going to be the very last Passover before the resurrection of all of us, the, the dead and the living, the rapture. Could you internalize this for a while and get real, unlike the Southern Baptist preachers who don't add any spiritual faith and heart to their preaching. They just preach a message, here's the verses, and let's go to lunch. Please don't do that tonight. Please know where you are, know who you are, know who Jesus is, what he's done for you, and what it means. This was at the beginning of the church age. That thief is about to look over to him and say, remember me, and then boom, we're at the end of it. Please let this be real to you. Verse 3, and Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him. We're in verse 4, chapter 13, no, 18, 4. Whom he said, whom seek ye? Jesus says, so who are you looking for? But he, he already knew. He knew all things. And they answered him, said, Jesus of Nazareth. I, I wish people would preach Jesus of Nazareth instead of Jesus. Jesus of Hillsong, Jesus of Elevation, Jesus of Word of Faith, Jesus of NAR. I wish people would preach Jesus of Nazareth. These guys knew who they were looking for. Whom seek ye? Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Jesus said unto them, I am. 
you'll see in your King James Version that he is in italics. The I am he makes it flow in the English language. But what he really said was I am. The same thing he told Moses when Moses said, what's your name? Who are you? I am. I exist because I exist. You tell him that. And as soon as he said, I am, Jesus saith unto them, I am. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as he had said unto them, I am, they went backwards. They flew backwards to the ground. Judas too. Judas fell backwards, just like all the NAR and Pentecostals do. When you oppose God and he says, I am, and you confront the real God, you're going to fall backwards. And Judas fell with the Roman soldiers backwards, man. Then asked he, them again, so who, who are you looking for? And they said unto him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these others go their way. That saying might be fulfilled, which he spake. Of them which thou gavest me, I lost not one. Evil men fall backwards when confronted with God. Men who fear God fall forwards on their faces. Hallelujah. In humility, in holy fear, holy reverence before the Lord. And so all this is taking place, guys, right now. Why don't we follow Jesus along this whole weekend? Tomorrow is his death, his brutal, brutal beatdown on that cross. Everybody running from him. Everybody forgetting about him. Everybody fleeing. Everybody thinking about themselves. And that's scriptural. He, he was going to be by himself. The women were there, and this young John came back. He was about 21 years of age. He was about 17 when Jesus called him. He and his brother, their sons of thunder, they were fiery fellas, fishermen. Jesus called him, and he walked with him faithfully. And now he's about 21 years of age, the youngest of the followers. And he stayed faithful. He come back. He ran off, but he came back. Amen. Ain't that a good promise for you and me? When we've blown it, when we've made mistakes, the Lord lets us come right back to him, right away. There's no delay. There's no, oh, say 15 Hail Marys and then do this and do some cartwheels. It's, oh, Lord, look into his wonderful face and just believe and trust. And he, he, never, he never breaks his promise to you or his graces or his fellowship or his covenant. It's just you that are in the wrong thinking, the wrong mindset. And you got to get back to him and say, Jesus, Jesus, I want all of you. I want, I want to be all for you that you intended me to be. Let me do that. So tonight, that's where we are. Jesus went through the meal. He went through the warnings. And he went through the being betrayed. And that's what's going on right now through the rest of the night. Jerusalem time, live. This is live time. Jerusalem time. He's going through those trials with Pilate and all those others. And they brought him back this way. And they punched him in the face. And they beat him down here. And he stayed faithful. He stayed faithful to his calling of the Father, man. He did what he was supposed to do. And guys, receive the men of God when God sends them your way. Don't kick them. Don't, don't heal them. Don't think you're going to be a Judas on them, okay? Or a Peter in denials. We know what happened later to Peter. But uh, that's a little bit later in the hours. Why don't we look at a couple Bible codes here? All right. This one here is from January 1st. 2019. This is one that he had to redo because it's out of order. Uh, he redid it in a modern form to so he could present it later. And, you know, why I say that is because we're right now in 2021. That's the codes we're looking at from 2021, 22. We're about to enter 22. So this one here is January 1, 2019. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Now, how many of y'all believe that? Our God's an awesome God. Amen. On Passover night, eating the Seder meal before the Seder meal. And before it was Passover, they ate their own meal because he was about to become the Passover lamb while everybody else was eating theirs. Didn't get, get invited to that table. Praise God. Everybody bypassed him on the cross. Oh, okay, who's that guy on the cross? Yeah, yeah, with two thieves. Yeah, okay. And just bypassed him. Had no idea. That's who their parents had looked to for the last 1,500 years in their Passover practice, their Passover dress rehearsal, their feast, their moed. Totally missed him. Don't miss him, guys. Don't miss one iota of him. Get rid of the world because the devil wants to filter Jesus out. He wants to get all of Jesus away from all of you. Don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. You live with him. You walk with him in these steps, man. Amen. Now that we're saved, now that he abides in us and we abide in him, walk faithfully. 
Be faithful. We have the Holy Spirit of God directing our steps and follow faithfully. Listen to his voice. Hear his voice. Do not harden your heart. Okay? All right. This is January 1st, 2019. Our God is an awesome God. Boy, that's some small font. Let me blow that dude up here. It's at 52, 626. 52, 626 from the bottom up, negative. 52, 626. And it says, our God's an awesome God. Don't you like that? Boy, I do. Our God is truly an awesome God. That says, Sean. And here's Psalm 96, 4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. That's our Lord. And being there on that cross, being beaten, it didn't seem like he was too much of a god there. And that's what everybody was thinking in their heads and their hearts. How could this be God? You know, Romans were thinking that. I've never read this with Hercules. I've never seen Atlas doing this or Zeus or Apollos. No, they're, they're victorious. They're great. And here's this. You're calling him God? Yeah, you better recognize who's in your presence when they're in your presence, pal. Okay? Those sent from God, believe those, follow those. Amen. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Psalm 95, 1. Oh, come, let's sing unto the Lord. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord, to the rock of our salvation. He's the foundation of our salvation. We ain't going to slip or fall or the house won't crumble when he's our rock, when he's our foundation. Sing to him. Rejoice. Here's one to the chief musician, a psalm for the Psalms of Korah, Psalm 47, 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He's awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Amen. Let's look at this one. Psalm 126, 1 to 3. Song of Degrees. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, O Lord, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord, there's going to be a lot of people witnessing that the Lord has done great things for you when you go missing. They're going to have memories of people that aren't raptured. They'll be thinking about what you said, said and what you shared. The Lord has done great things for her. The Lord did great things. I wish I'd have listened. The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. We are glad. Right now, Satan's going to come after you. He's going to try to beat you down. He's going to try to get you sad. And you just walk in the oil of gladness. Jesus is that oil. Remember, Pentecost is 153 days. We start counting the second week of June. And we'll count for 153 days all the way to November. Okay? And so, and that happens to be just about, uh, I guess, five months. It's right at five months of counting. Amen? And so we're going to get raptured in that Pentecost season, and I'm going for the first 50 days. Amen? That's what, when I think the Holy Spirit planted the church, and I think that's when he'll rapture the church. That's my opinion. Um, anybody want to think about that? Give me 50 days, man. All right. Here's the code. God's word in his dialect. Our God is an awesome God. The Holy One of Israel is Yeshua. Oh, behold, Yeshua. Look to Jesus. The Mighty One was a vapor. Now, what? Yeah, that's what these guys didn't understand. All the Romans, everybody looking on. How could this guy? I mean, he's, he's a vapor. He's dying on us. That's what vapor means. You're here for a short time and then vanish away. Our life is a vapor. God's life isn't a vapor. He's the eternal one. But he came here to be a vapor for all of us vapors, so we could have everlasting life. Amen. He became human and died for the humans, so we could have everlasting life as a free gift, man. He was kosher. Kosher is a Hebrew word for fit. He was fit. You can make it fit to eat, fit to work with, fit to whatever, but he was fit. He was the perfect fit. God dying for us. The lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. He was kosher. He was holy with his own purity. You and I aren't. We're holy with his purity. We're not holy by our own. We're holy with his imputed righteousness in us. And as soon as he saves us, as soon as you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, he sets you aside 
for his purpose. That's called sanctification. That's called being set apart in purity. Set apart. Being made holy is being sanctified. Holy means, it doesn't mean, oh, I'm perfect. Holy means I've been chosen by God and I'm set over here away from the other group, the unsaved group who doesn't believe. We're made holy. We're in our small little group over here unto him. He is holy and he said, I'm holy and therefore be ye holy for I'm holy. And so he was holy with his own purity and he rose up on high. Our Yeshua for joy and gladness. Every song is a good song when Jehovah is in them. Let's get back to singing about Jesus of Nazareth and God himself. Amen. And that's something we desire of him and we love. I get so sick of these women who's talking about Jesus like a love story. Oh, we just embrace and everything. I'm the, I'm the bride and he's the groom. You better quit that wickedness. You better find out what the truth is about our being the bride and groom. Okay? Get out of your fantasy. We just posted a post today about fantasy. The whole world's in a fantasy. What is fantasy? That which opposes God's truth. Fiction opposes truth. Get out of your fiction and get into truth. And let's read that translation again. It's in that skip of, what do we say? 52, 626. 52, 626, and it's a row skip. Red dot, row skip. Red dot, row skip. Red dot, row skip. All right. Or was that the other one? Yeah, it's this one. Row skip. All right. Translation. God's word in his dialect. Code given to us by Sean Mitchell. Our God's an awesome God. The Holy One of Israel is Jesus. Behold, Yeshua. The Mighty One was a vapor. Oh, it's incredible. What a great doctrine. And it happens in just hours. Jerusalem time. Remember, when they finally got him to the cross, it was 9 a.m. their time, which will be about... 1 a.m. our time? I think it's an eight-hour differential. 1 a.m. Central Time is when Jesus went to the cross. Please follow along. Please follow along. He's got the calendar straight. God has gotten it straight through Sean Mitchell and his hard work, his labor, his searching the scriptures, searching the uh, sun, moon, and stars. We got it right. Follow along, man. Just follow along, okay? Don't be like the disciples and flee. Follow along. Peter followed afar off. Remember, while he was denying Jesus those three times, the scripture says, and Peter followed afar off. Don't let that be you. You follow right up close. You get in the yoke with him. You be that close. Okay? Oh, he, he became a vapor. He was fit. He was kosher. He was holy from his own purity. And he rose up on high for Jesus, for joy and gladness. Every song is a good song when Jehovah is in them. Sing about Jesus, man. Sing about Jesus. Let's go to the next one. All right. This is April 26, 2019. April 26, 2019. Sean says, This is an incredible detailed account of Jesus' death on the cross found in the book of Isaiah. He's not here, for he is risen. Amen. What good news. Those, those poor gals, they were just, they were so in love with Jesus and they knew who he was and they saw the brutality he went through and they were so heartbroken when they got to the tomb and he had, his body had been stolen. Grave robbers. But the angel said, no, no grave robbers. Do, do not be sad. He, why are we looking for the dead among the living? Amen. He's alive. He's not here for he's risen. Here's the code, God's word in his dialect, code by Sean Mitchell. And let's see what that skip is. Boom, boom, boom. That is 1,266, just in Isaiah. 1266, 1266. And it is going from the top to the bottom. Positive. And Heather has that link here. It says, the prophet Isaiah gave thanks. A lamp is to die. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus is the word made flesh. Jesus is to die. A lamp is to die. Jesus, the ram. Remember yesterday's Bible code where God provided the ram in Isaac's place? And don't you know he was grateful and Abraham was grateful? So grateful. So grateful. And they listened to the Lord. They went to Mount Moriah. They couldn't have gone to any other mountain. God said, go here and you go there. He said, go offer your son, your only son. And he went there and he built the altar and got the wood ready 
and everything was ready to go. He's ready to come down with a knife on his son. And the angel grabbed his arm and said, stop. The Lord has provided himself a ram. He's provided himself, Jesus Christ, to be the sacrifice instead. And that's what this is talking about right here in Isaiah's Bible code, guys. For the whole world, he became the ram. For the whole world, he has also become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. A mystery of the Lord, a lowly one died in the pain of his blood. So much pain, guys. He's in so much pain right now. They've already started dragging him, disregarding him, disgracing him, pulling him along to these false ritual, un unritualized trials, wicked trials, liars all around, false witnesses. He's suffering already for us, guys, at this time, 1,994 years ago. Oh, but therefore with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. He did all this for joy. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Joy, joy. This is a time of joy as we have a time of sorrow too. But it's because of what he did, we don't have to do anything. We just believe. And he saves us to the uttermost, man. Glory to God. Therefore, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. A mystery of the Lord, a lowly one died. Nobody knew what was going to happen. They didn't expect God to die. They, the Jews still despise that idea. God doesn't die. Well, if you read your Bible, you know that Jesus is God and God died. He, he became a vapor, so he could die. And then when he rose, he's the eternal living one in his glorifiedness. You and I are going to be in that glorified body too, real soon. A mystery of the Lord, a lowly one died in the pain of his blood. They reflected in the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. Behold, it is written, thus he will bring. Isaiah 53 talks about Jesus going through all this stuff 700 years before he went through this stuff. And the Jews won't let their people read this chapter because it points them right to Jesus. But when they are shown this on the street, they'll react. They'll get mad. They'll, but they have to answer the question, so who is this? What's this talking about? It sounds like Yeshua. Right. It is written in Isaiah 53 and others that he's coming. And he will bring. He's going to do what he said. Gift of Yeshua. It's a gift, guys. It's a gift. Salvation's a gift. Please embrace it as a gift. Offer. It's offered to you freely. Receive freely. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, this is for me, and you'll be saved. You'll be sanctified, and you'll be glorified here shortly. See, we're already saved, sanctified, and as good as glorified. The, the Holy Spirit is here to promise us our down payment for our glorification for our new body. Amen? Amen? That's so good. The affliction to the Lord reconciled. Wow. Yeah, Jesus was afflicted, and he was Lord, and through his affliction, you and I have been reconciled, brought back to him. We can now look at him without shame and disgrace. We can look at him in joy as, as a child and as a bride. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Jesus. And he's reconciled us. He's brought us back into fellowship is what that means. Why? Through his affliction. The, the affliction of the Lord reconciled. Jehovah died on the Roman tree. Wow, this is all found in Isaiah, folks. Isaiah, the Old Testament, telling us these facts that we've you know just kind of gotten used to. It's, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, and these are my facts. Think about it, guys. Take yourself out of the mundane and out of the flow that you've lived in and stop. Turn around and swim upstream and figure out these details and meditate on them and love them and make them be your own personal details, what Jesus has done for you each step of the way as he took that Via Della Rosa step, the way of suffering, man. The affliction of the Lord reconciled. Jehovah, God himself died, folks, on the Roman tree. The eclipse for a terror Towards the heavens. Oh, here comes Nibiru. That three-hour eclipse. He was on that cross six hours. The last three were in that eclipse of Nibiru. The eclipse for terror towards the heavens. It's going to be terror this time. And it's just going to be a little month or two back, it might seem. Because it happened here while Passover was happening. 
right? There's Nibiru. And it's going to happen at the rapture and after. Okay? They're going to start seeing Nibiru. And they're going to start feeling its results. It's hailstones of fire. It's wormwood. It's mountain falling from the sky. Nibiru is going to bring all that. And here it was, bringing it only to Jesus Christ of Nazareth this day. And it was a terror towards the heavens. The location of his star, that's Nibiru. Nibiru is his star. He created it on the fourth day to bring judgment to mankind from the flood, Sodom and Gomorrah, and on. And it's about to come back here, and it's going to be the closest it's ever orbited Earth. And that's why the devastation is going to be greater than any time ever on planet Earth. And it's going to be dropping payload after payload of payload of death and fire and blood the location of his star is a sign of the darkness. The earthquake, because God died, as soon as he said, it is finished, there was a great earthquake. The veil of the temple was torn in two, man. People come out of those graves. An earthquake because God died. How many times is he, Isaiah going to tell us it was God that died? God died. God died. You better know it was God that died. Jesus is God and he died. Unless you believe that, you're going to hell, man. You're going to hell because that's your default. You're already going. Jesus came so you wouldn't have to go. Please believe. Everybody who believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of this one Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you go to heaven, man. And Jesus knows when you believe. God knows when you believe it. The location of his star is a sign of darkness, the earthquake because God died, and the appointed time to rise. He is risen. That'll be on Saturday. Follow along. Follow along. These Bible codes are timely. Amen. All right, let's look at Isaiah 12, 2 to 4. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day ye shall say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Yeshua, 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 the highest name above all names. God gave him that name after he rose from the dead because he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And wherefore, God has all, hath also highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Isaiah 63, 5. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld. Now, God's salvation, this verse, you know, it's going in this Bible code, and it represents him. He, he, he was saved by his own arm. Nobody else could save him. Nobody else reached out here. And this is also a passage in the tribulation. When Jesus comes back, and ain't nobody else going to help him fight. He's going to save Israel himself, and it's going to be in fury. He talks about salvation and fury in the same line. That's our God. What does he say? And therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and that's his Jews in this context, and my fury, it upheld me. It kept me going. And then you read the verses after that, dude. Jesus does some killing. When he comes back at the tribulation, we encourage you to believe in him, have faith in him, walk with him and love him back, man. He loves you. There's nothing like the Lord's love and his pleasant face. Guys, when you read that Bible, you can see his pleasant face all over the place. Okay. He loves you. He didn't do all of this stuff to be mad at you and to hold grudges against you. He did all of this stuff so you'd be freed forever, eternally saved when you believe. Amen. Amen. All right. Romans 5.10. For if when we were enemies with God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being made reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So while we were enemies of God, he came to die for us so we could be his friends. It was impossible for us to be his friends until Jesus took the sin issue away. And he took all the sin of all people upon him and he died. And when he took it away, you and I have access to God right now. And he did all of that while we were his enemies. He didn't wait for us to get nice. You better get nice. You better get nice. And then I'll die for you. He did it while we were all pathetic in sin, wicked people. So we could be reconciled 
if we'd believe. And everybody who believes in the finished work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, his death, burial, and resurrection, you're saved. You're forever saved. You're forever forgiven, man. God is good. And Sean says, so what else can we glean from this code found in the book of Isaiah? The code is at a skip of 1,266. Interesting, the strong numbers 1266 of both the Hebrew and the Greek is directly related to the crucifixion of Jesus. The Hebrew 1266 is a cypress, a pine, or a fir tree. That's what Jesus died on, wasn't it? A tree? So that's how that number works. The Greek, that's the Old Testament Hebrew. The Greek 1266 means to partition thoroughly, distribute figuratively in a dissension, cloven, divide, part. And they parted his raiment. Remember that? Matthew 27, 35. And they crucified him and part, parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted, which is G, 1266, my garments among them. And upon, oh, good night. And upon my vestures they did cast lots. And so th both of these Letters, these numbers, 1266 Greek, 1266 Hebrew have everything to do with the cross. And that's the skip of this passage in Isaiah talking about the cross. Jesus Christ, God dying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mark 15, 24. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what they should take. Psalm 69, 21. That's a good psalm, guys. Read that one. They gave me also gall for my meat. B bitter gall, a uh, painkiller. He was up there on the cross, so thirsty. He said, I'm so, I'm so thirsty. And they gave him uh, gall to drink. Vinegar and nitre, man. And he refused it. He spit it out. In my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. He refused the painkiller. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among the people. Declare, people, declare. Let's read that translation again, and we'll go on to the next one. Translation is a doozy. The prophet Isaiah gave thanks. A lamp is to die. Jesus is to die. Yeshua, the ram for the whole world. He has become my salvation. Hallelujah. Therefore, with joy shall he draw the waters of the wells of salvation, a mystery of the Lord, a lowly one died in the pain of his blood. They reflected in the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. Behold, it is written, thus he will bring it. If it's in the Bible, it's going to happen. He's going to bring it. He's about to bring it. Gift of Yeshua, the affliction of the Lord, reconciled Jehovah, died on the Roman tree, the eclipse for the terror towards the heavens, Nibiru. The location of his star, Nibiru, is a sign of the darkness. And it's going to, going to come again. It's going to be a 24-hour eclipse during the tribulation. And it's going to be this big planet. Uh, that means it's much closer to Earth now than it was then. It was much smaller in appearance then when it came through. It was only a three-hour tour. Now it's so close to the Earth, this thing is huge. It's going to be a 24-hour tour. And that's why we know it's so much closer, and the debris it's going to bring is going to be just, oh, judgmental. The location of his star is a sign of darkness, an earthquake because God died, and the appointed time to rise, he is risen. And that'll be Saturday. Tonight is the night Jesus is crucified, okay? The night before he was crucified. And then... We'll follow along, and Saturday is the true resurrection, guys. Follow along. Follow along. I, I beg you, I, for your sake, for your sake, for your looking into the eyes of Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ's sake. Do you believe he's going to be your judge? He's not there to judge harmfully or intimidate you. He's going to reward you for having believed. Everything you believe that's concerning him that was sent from God, boy, you believe it. You believe his word. You believe his, you know, his Bible, his plain text, the coded text. You believe that. God will reward you for that. All right. Yeah, let's look at one more. This is January 14th, 2022. Sean says, The church, the body of Christ, was a mystery revealed to the Apostle Paul. The church is the body of Christ, and he gives the verses here. 1 Corinthians 6, Christ in us. 1 Corinthians 13, we're in him. 
1 Corinthians 1, the church is the flesh with Christ. And we see that in um, Ephesians 5. He's the head and we're the body. We're fitly joined, guys. We're, we are of the body of Christ if you're saved. And please live in that. Walk in that. Believe it. Acts 13, 47. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Praise God. He's the light of the Gentiles because the Jews snuffed him out. They snuffed his light out and they can only see partially now. But when we're raptured, he's going to remove their blindness. And they'll see that he was their light too. Not just the light of the Gentiles, but the light of the, the whole world. Colossians 1, 27 and 28. To whom God would make known, that is the riches of his glory, of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. And this is all talking about the body of Christ, the church. That's the Gentile bride, the Gentile church. It's Christ Jesus in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man. See, that's what's not happened in churches for a long time. They want to talk about this sappy, happy, clappy Jesus and forget about his warnings, dude. He's warning the lost. You're going to hell until you're not. You better warn them. And the church ain't warn them. Joel Osteen ain't. He said, I believe that 99.9% .9 of humanity has a good heart. I think they're good people. They make many bad mistakes, make poor choices, but I think they're good people. The Bible says there's none good. No, not one. Not 99.9% .9 there, idiot. Okay? You better go with God on this thing, and you better preach the warnings, preacher. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man complete in Jesus Christ. That's why we preach here. That's why we preach the plain text and the coded text. So you'll have your entire life, all the holes filled with Jesus, that which is heavenly. And get rid of all this earthly stuff so we can present you. That's what a pastor's job is, is to teach you so we can present you to the Lord. Uh Sheep who's been faithful and who's got the fullness of God in you through his teaching. And you'll be the complete, perfect man, woman in Jesus Christ. That's what complete, perfect means is complete. Be complete, guys. Don't go to heaven partial. Go to heaven complete. That's having believed it all. Known it all, searched it all, seeking for God, seeking for his ways, and walking in that. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Right now, tonight, guys. Jesus Christ being crucified here shortly. 1,994 years ago today, he's being beaten down right now, disrespected, bleeding out, being betrayed, denied, and everybody fled. Right now, I am crucified with Christ. Is that you? Are you? Have you taken the blows for Jesus? Have you been close with him? Nevertheless, I still live... Yet not I, it's Christ Jesus who now lives in us. When you become a believer in the finished work of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God comes inside of us. And he changes us into a new creation, man. In the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I don't live unto myself anymore. I don't live unto bucket list and the worldly ideas and what they want me to do. The top 10 hotels here and the top 10 rest. Forget that, man. Jesus, what do you need me to do tonight? Guys, there's joy in that. You, you, if you're an unbeliever, you may think there's not joy in that. If you're a believer who loves the flesh, you, you'll think that there's no joy in that. But once you start serving the Lord Jesus, obeying his word, knowing his word, coming to know him, taste and see that the Lord is good, it's a mind blower. It's a mind changer. And you'll be thinking, why was I like that before the other way? And guys, I spent a lot of years like that as a Christian, living in the flesh, living for the now, living for, you know, WWE and WWF and, and UFC and baseball, basketball, football, hockey. What a waste. What, what a waste. And you'll know that the closer you get to Jesus. And those things were put here as a, as a uh, decoy to keep us from Jesus. And I encourage you to be saved. It ain't nothing no good until you're first saved. Until you realize, man, I, I'm in need of a Savior, dude. I've got to be saved. Jesus is your Savior. He did it all in joyfulness. We saw that earlier in that code earlier, that he did it out of joy, man. So you and I could be saved even when we were mean to him. We were hateful to him. We were filled with sin. And he did it all so we could be his friend because sin kept us from being his friend. And he took all the sin upon him to take it all away. So now we can be reconciled to God, be made his friends again. 
And here's the translation. God's word in his dialect. Let's look at that skip, dude. Uh, 16,482. 16,482. And remember, tonight is the night of the true crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Okay? Right now, at this time, on Jerusalem's time, he's being falsely judged and beaten down right now. Okay? 1,994 years ago. God's word in his dialect, code by Sean Mitchell. Jesus is in Paul. God's telling us Paul is the real deal. He wrote 14 books of the Bible, and you better believe them. Believe them all. 13 is for you and I, the church, right now. The 14th book, the book of Hebrews, will be for all the tribulation saints especially. Okay? Because they'll be in the time of building the temple and having the temple present and all the animals being sacrificed. And this book is for them, guys. It's Jesus. It's not those animal sacrifices. He, those sacrifices pointed to him, and now that he has come, he's fulfilled all the law. You don't need all this, and that's what Hebrews is about. And Sean and the other guy will come back and be preaching that, along with these coded texts. So Jesus is in Paul, or Jehovah is. He's telling us right now, God's telling us, that Jesus is God. Jesus is Jehovah. Jehovah is Jesus. One God in three manifestations, three persons. The life of the body will be like this, Jehovah and us. That's the life of the body. Jesus is the head, we're the body. Please be saved and be joined, conjoined to Jesus, man. Let him come in your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit come into your heart, and you'll know what we're talking about. Jesus in us, man, Jehovah in us, and I will make of you a great and mighty nation. Now, there's folks out there that teach Christians aren't the nation, that that's Israel. We're, the, we're a nation. We're a different nation than Israel. We're, we're a nation of kingdoms, uh, king, kings and priests, prophets, okay? And this right here verifies that. So when you get with those hyper uh, dispensational folks that say the, the, we're not a nation, we are a nation. Uh, he said, and I will make of you a great and mighty nation. Who's that? The people who are joined to Jesus. He's the head and we're the body. From him, from the lamb is this man of God. And Joseph prepared a sword for him, or J Joshua. Joshua is Jesus, okay? The Old Testament name Joshua is Yeshua in the New Testament, Jesus. So that's why this is running through here, because this is a uh, Old Testament code. And we see the name Joshua here, and it represents Jesus. So he says, And Joshua prepared a sword for him, which is the word of the Lord. The Bible is a two-edged sword, and it's the word of the Lord. And it can cut deep, man. It can find truths that people didn't even know they had. It can find truths in somebody else, and they were like, how did you know that about me? Because the Word of God gives us discernment, and the Word of God gives us open eyes and a serious, serious heart of discernment. And we do that because we love you. We want you saved. All right. And so Joshua prepared a sword for him, which is the Word of the Lord. You will be acquitted. Woo! We were guilty in our trespasses and sins. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. And when you... The moment you believe, you place your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, you're acquitted of all your guilt, acquitted of all your sin, all those stupid choices you made and the lives you ruined along the way, acquitted. You are innocent of all charges when you believe in Jesus Christ. What a beautiful thing. And what happens? He took it upon him. He became guilty. Please understand the love of God for you and be saved today. You will be acquitted. And that's knowledge for them. That's what Paul was teaching us. See, the purpose of Paul was to teach us about the mystery church and everybody who believes in Jesus is part of the church. And we're acquitted from all guilt, from all sin, from all shame, man, from all stupid experiences, from poor choices. We're acquitted. And that was great knowledge for us that Paul brought. Salvation is in Jesus. It is in Yeshua. By faith, only by faith. You can't work it out. You can't please him. Brownie points. Hey, Lord, look at me here. I'm being real good boy. There's none righteous, no, not one. You must be purified. You must be made holy by the blood of Jesus. And when you believe, his perfection, his perfection is infused into you. God sees his perfection and not our failures because that's put on Jesus. What a great trade-off, man. According to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee, who is Yeshua, the Lord our God, and he will save us. In you, Jehovah, will be confirmed to the Gentiles. Jehovah 
is confirmed to the Gentiles through Paul's preaching, the mystery church, that when you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, Jehovah himself comes inside your life and connects you like an umbilical to heaven. The Holy Spirit connects us to heaven. And that's why we have direct access to God in prayer. We don't have to go through rituals and you're cursed if you do, you know, lighting candles and going to confessional and Hail Marys and all that crap, all that religious crap. God wants us to worship him in spirit and truth. When you're saved, man, you got direct access. You don't got to go to all the church rituals, none of that. God hates the massive majority of church ritual because it opposes his God, if, his word. If you would just read his word, you'd know what we're talking about. We, we encourage you to do that. That's why we preach it, so you'll know it. So who is Yeshua? The Lord our God, and he will save us. In you, Jehovah will be confirmed to the Gentiles. The gospel to the Gentiles is in the mystery. Aren't you thankful for the gospel? That mystery is about to close. When Jesus raptures us, we know it's Pentecost. We know it's Pentecost. And it has come and gone for seven seasons we've looked at it, officially. We had to get the get on the right calendar, get off the Jews' calendar. Theirs is 40 three to 45 days too fast. Then we had to figure out some dates. Last year, we had to add a little 30th to the calendar because it required it. Because um, Virgo is such a huge, huge um, constellation that it required it last year to keep us on. Virgo has 29 and 30. And never before last year had we ever heard of 30th, a little 30th. So God sharpened that in us. And this year, that we believe this is the final thing that we need to know, is when this true Sabbath day is. They say it's Saturday, but it ain't, because they have lied. They hate God, and they are of the devil. The Vatican, and also the Jews of the synagogue of Satan, they hate Jesus. They hate him with a passion. And so they have lied. And so this Bible code has got us on the truth. For the past 10 years of searching, it's got us on the truth of the calendar, and we're about to find out. When the day we begin to count, it's important that we know when Sabbath is so we'll know when the first day of the week is because that's when we begin counting officially for Pentecost for the next 50 days and then the next 50 days and then the next 50 days and then the next six days. And uh, that's pretty cool, man. But I, I'm praying and hoping that God will do for us and rapture us on day 50. What do you say? That first 50-day count to the wheat harvest, from the barley harvest to the wheat harvest, 50 days. And that begins the second week of June, and we'll count those 50 days out. And I praise God for you guys that take care of that business. Let's look at this Deuteronomy passage, and we'll be done. This is concerning the mystery church. And don't you want to be part of the mystery church? Because we're the mystery bride. And only the bride of Christ, dead and living, will be the raptured ones. We, we get... First dibs at everything, seven years before everybody else. All the people in the Old Testament, they're going to have to wait seven years. Now, we'll see them in heaven. They'll be in their spirit bodies, but they won't be in their physical bodies like you and I, our glorified physical bodies. That, that is a gift only given to the church, the mystery church. And the mystery church, you only become part of that when you place your faith in the head of that church, Jesus Christ. And you become part of the body of that Christ. We're one unit working together by faith in the Word of God. Please be saved today. Please come to heaven with us. Deuteronomy 5, 31. But as for you, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto all the commandments. I'll speak unto you all the commandments, and the statutes and the judgments which thou shalt teach them. This is what God told Moses. This is what Moses told Joshua. This is what Jesus told Paul. I got some new commandments. You're going to write these things, and I want you to um, stand here by me, and I will speak unto you all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which you shall teach them. And this is what Sean has been doing for the last 10 years. Jesus has stood by him doing that, getting us these seven volumes of these thunders mentioned in Scripture. Catherine says, we are so blessed. Amen. Tyvon says, hey, brother. Hey, guy. We are so blessed. Guys, please understand what we're saying. Understand what we're saying. There's so few of us because everybody, the religion has got it wrong, man. Only the Bible has it right. And now God has sent us Sean Mitchell and God is standing beside him saying, okay, here's what I want you to do. Write down my statues, my laws, my word, and I want you to teach all the people that. Well, he's taught us. Not everybody's believed. There probably ain't 20 people watching us right now. And, you know, we got a lot of people in Europe and and Asia who watch us, they, so they'll, they're sleeping now. They'll get up in the morning and watch it faithfully. And I don't know how many that is. It's very few.
But I'm going to encourage you, if you've heard this, you believe it. And Sean Mitchell's busy, busy completing up this book on this side. Get it all published for us. One last final update. Amen? And so that's what's happening now, that Deuteronomy 531 passage. Let's pray. Papa, we love you. We're so grateful that you love us. and You made the way for us, reconciliation through your blood. And I pray for anybody listening to us who's not a believer, that you will burden their heart, that it's so vital that they believe for their sake, for their futures, for their eternities. And I just pray that those of us who believe that you'll keep growing us, we'll stay faithful to you. We won't rebel. We won't fight. We won't live after the flesh, but we'll walk after the Spirit. And help us with that. Walk through your word. Live your word. Know your word. Hide it. Share it. Breathe it. Uh, that's knowing you, right? We want to know you. The power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. I pray for everybody here tonight that you'll bless them in their homes, bless them on the daily, and uh, in health, and in their minds. And uh, just keep us straight, Lord. Keep us on the line. We love you and you praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, guys. I love you. And by His grace, we'll see you tomorrow night at 726. Amen. Glory to God.